Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts. And today I'd like to talk to you about tips on improving your first round lethal strike from the ready position. So let's first talk about the ready position. Um, one of the things that we try to emphasize to people is being able to learn how to draw the gun from a concealed condition in a deadly force encounter is very important, not downplaying that at all. But what sometimes doesn't get a lot of attention is the importance of recognizing that a deadly force encounter is imminent and being able to draw to a ready position. The idea that a gun in hand is better than a gun in a holster kind of is what we're looking at there. So let's just kind of keep that in the back of our head right now. We want to, at some point, have a discussion about the importance of learning how to draw to a ready, possibly engaging a target or possibly reholstering because the threat was stopped. That's for another time. So let's talk about, I have the gun at a ready position and now what I wanna do is I wanna be able to deliver a accurate first round lethal strike. What do I need to do that? So if you think about it, and we'll use, the, uh, we'll use two common ready positions, the low ready and the compressed ready. They each have a little kind of like individual nuances. Um, but both of them will have pretty much the same thing, which is the gun has to be moved from the ready position to the intended strike point on the target. Once you've identified the strike point, the key is gonna be to drive the gun right to that point. This is the first step that you want to do. Don't just move the gun aimlessly, move the gun to the specific point that you want the bullet to impact, all right? The second thing is do not move your finger to the trigger until you have confirmed the sights and are ready to fire. What I mean by that is very simply, if you move your finger to the trigger, the natural tendency, whether the sights are ready or not, is for you to start to apply pressure to the trigger, which will lead to the round being fired before either the gun is on target or the sights are confirmed. Either case, it produces a miss. So there's really no value in putting your finger on the trigger until you can get the gun on target and sights confirmed, which means that you've got to work hard to get the gun on target and sights confirmed. Then the second part to the trigger finger movement is once you do decide to move your finger to the target, it's because you have been able to justify the application of deadly force, right? So let's always remember that that has to be part of our decision-making process, that when I move my finger to the trigger, it's because I have decided to use deadly force and justification is there to support that decision, all right? So let's move on. The next thing we talk about is how we move the trigger. Any type of discussion on precision, marksmanship, accuracy is going to have trigger involved in it. And the biggest shooter errors that we see stem from trigger control issues. So when we're talking about moving the trigger from the ready position, what I tell, what I tell people is move the trigger to the rear with minimal disruption to the sights, right? The better your grip, the less likely you are to see sight deviations. So why don't we take a quick break and let's look at some live fire demonstrations of each of those.